I got some more on the Lucas polynomials today, so I hope you enjoy it. So as a reminder, the zeroth Lucas polynomial is zero, the first Lucas polynomial is one, and for n greater than or equal to two, the nth Lucas polynomial is x times the one previous plus y times two previous. And so just as a reminder, this isn't what we're gonna talk about today, but if you set x equals one and y equals one, you get uh, the Fibonacci. If you set x equals two and y equals negative one, you get uh, bracket n is equal to n. So you get some interesting sequences um, that you can study from these Lucas polynomials. So what we're gonna look at today so remember in your calculus, or maybe your probability class, you learn about the binomial coefficient, right? You definitely learn about it when you learn about um, power series in calculus. And this is equal to n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. And what's interesting about the binomial coefficient is that even though it's a fraction, it's always an integer. Okay, and maybe in the future I can make a video proving this using combinatorics. But it's not that hard to prove. And so what we're gonna look at today is not the binomial coefficient, but the leukonomials. Okay, so it's gonna be curly bracket n choose k. And what is this gonna be equal to? It's gonna be curly bracket n factorial over curly, curly bracket k factorial, curly bracket n minus k factorial. And we're gonna check if this is not an integer but a polynomial in x and y with integer coefficients. It would be crazy if it is. It is. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna show that or give a sketch of a proof today to, uh, to prove this. Okay, but what is bracket n factorial? Well, bracket n factorial is equal to bracket n times bracket n minus one factorial. And bracket zero factorial will just equal one. Okay, so for example, Bracket four factorial is equal to bracket four, which is x to the third plus two xy times bracket three, which is x squared plus y times x times one. Okay, and we can multiply this out to x to the sixth plus three x to the fourth y plus two x squared y squared. Okay, and so to start, before we could show that the leukonomial, so the Lucas uh, binomial, is uh, a polynomial with integer coefficients, let's come up with a combinatorial object that could help us um, evaluate this Lucas factorial without having to do this whole multiplication. And so the way we do this is we, we start with a pyramid. Okay, so we're gonna have a pyramid. The bottom row will have n minus one boxes. The next row will have n minus two and so forth until the top row has one. And kind of like we, what we did a few, few videos ago, we're going to tile the rows with dominoes and monominoes, okay? And that we're only gonna tile them across the rows. And so we could have all monominoes and the weight of this tiling is going to be, remember monominoes correspond to x. So the weight of this tiling is x to the sixth. So let me draw out a few uh, more pyramids and then we'll label them all.
Okay, so we're, again, only allowed to tile along the rows. So we could have all dominoes in the bottom row, maybe, I mean, all monominoes in the bottom row, a domino and a monomino. We could have this tiling, we could have this tiling, and we could have these last two tilings. Okay, and let's just compute their weights. This is x to the fourth, right? There's four monominoes times y. This is again x to the fourth times y. This is x squared, y squared. This is x to the fourth times y. And this is x squared, y squared. Okay, so if you add up all of these weights, you'll get bracket four factorial. So this is gonna be these tilings, these pyramid tilings, are gonna be the combinatorial object that we use to, um, eva to evaluate bracket n factorial. So in general, we would have n minus one boxes in the bottom row, then n minus two, n minus three, all the way up to one box on the top. Okay, and just, with a, just by computation, we could check if bracket four choose two is a, a polynomial in, uh, in X and Y with, with, uh, with coefficients in Z. And just by, just by computation, this is equal to X to the fourth plus three X squared Y plus two Y squared. Okay, and so it is. We haven't shown why it is yet. And just the other one, four choose three is equal to x to the third plus two uh, xy, which is also a polynomial in z. So our goal to show that this Lucas binomial is a polynomial in x and y with uh, coefficients in z, is what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to group together the tilings. So we wanna group together these tilings in a way such that the weights of each group is divisible by this product. Okay, so if we could factor, if we could group them together and then, and then divide out by this, whatever's remaining um, will contribute to uh, the, the, the polynomial n choose k, well, uh, Lucas polynomial n choose k. Okay, so let me just give, so this is, this is uh, the bottom row here is six. So this would like correspond to seven factorial if we, if we looked at all possible tilings. So I'm gonna just give one tiling and I'm gonna show how we're gonna group our process for grouping it together. Okay, so here's a tiling that would correspond to, uh, to seven factorial. It would be one term in the expansion of seven factorial. We want to show that this is divisible by, let's say, three factorial and four factorial. So we're going to create a path starting at either position three or four. It doesn't really matter. I'll start with three. And the path is going to tell us how, what to really divide out by. Okay, so here we're starting at position three, right? One, two, three. And the rules are, we wanna go north unless we're not allowed to. And then in that case, we go west and then north. So here, we wanna go north, but there's a domino in the way. So we'll go west and then north. Right, and we could always do that. If there's a domino in the way, then if we go west, there can't be another domino in the way. And so now we check again. Can we go north? Yes, there's no domino in the way. We, we're here. Can we go north? No, there's a domino in the way. So we go west and then north. Then we go north, west and north, and then north. Okay, and so what, what's our rule gonna be? 
our rule is going to be if we went west and then north, we keep everything to the right. Okay, so let me draw in the path. Okay, so the rule is if we went west and north, we keep everything to the right, we don't draw anything to the left. If we went just north, we keep everything to the left, we get rid of everything to the right. West, north, we keep everything to the right. North, keep everything to the left. West, north, keep everything to the right. Just north, we keep everything to the left. Okay, and so what do we do here? We removed some tiles, some, some of the tilings, some of the dominoes and monominoes. And notice, it doesn't really matter what happens to the left because our determining if we divide out by that or not is based off of our position here. So this could have been really any tiling we could imagine, okay? And it's two, tom uh, two tiles, so this corresponds to a bracket three, right? Remember, bracket three had two squares to tile. And this could be tiled anyway. Over here, there's four of them. So this corresponds to a bracket four. In this row, we removed one box, which corresponds to a bracket two. Here, we removed two blocks, two boxes. So that's a bracket three. Here we removed no boxes, so that's a bracket one. Here we removed one box, so that's a bracket two. And then, you know, if we went up one more, one more, uh, zero boxes, so bracket one. So you could see we removed weights corresponding to three factorial on the left and four factorial on the right. And this will work in general. So this is kind of the outline of how we can group together, um, group together these tilings to, to guarantee we could factor out uh, a n factor, a k factorial and an n minus k factorial. So let's do it with these tilings here to see that we could always factor out a one factorial and a three factorial um, from this case here. So what would we do? We start at position one. We start at position one and we go north if we can and uh, west and north if we can't. So this would be north, 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 west, north. And remember, when we go north, what happens? We erase everything to the right. Okay, so this would now correspond to an x to the third. We do the same thing here. So this be an x, y. We do the same thing here. Okay, this is the exact same path and tiling remaining as what we already had here. So these would have been grouped together. So we don't have to count that again. Similarly here, this is the exact same path in tiling as, as this one, so we don't have to count this. So this would be a x, y. And then last, we would get the same thing here. So we don't have to count that one. So we would look at all of the weights of what remains that didn't get crossed out. 
and we have a x to the third plus 2xy, which is exactly what this expansion is. So that's the idea. So that's a, a sketch. I know we didn't really prove it today, but this is a sketch of why the Lucas binomials are polynomials with integer coefficients. Well, thanks for watching. Let me know if you like this video, and I'm happy to make more videos about Lucas polynomials.